<laughs> we'll see if that's how wow. It is. <laughs> wow. Like I said, I'm going to drag it down, you son of a... <laughs> if you wouldn't mind muting it. Okay. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is we're live. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's 10 o'clock. It's Friday. Uh, so says my watch and my calendar, which you can't see my calendar because it's in the other room. But we're talking about sleight of hand versus gimmicks. This is something that I've been asked a lot about, and I thought I would bring in my good friend Joe to talk about it. And we're going to get to that in just a second. But first, I'm going to make sure that my stream is working correctly and that I'm not running into issues with that because that happens every single time. Uh, see, there we go. Audio isn't on for us. That always seems to happen. I'm, I, don't, I don't know if I'm being teased or not. Am I being teased? No, I'm not being teased. But I'm not sure why that's happening. Dude, okay. All right. Okay. This is why we always, always, always test. Oh, you suck. Justin's messing with me. This is why we always, always, always. Yeah, Justin's teasing me. Okay, he does it every single time. Okay, this is why I pull up a second stream. Anyway, so a couple things we have to go over today, okay? And let's uh, let's pull all those things up. Uh, again, like I said, if you're just joining me, we have my friend Joe joining me on a Zoom call today, which is going to be really fun. We're going to be talking about sleight of hand versus gimmicks. This is something I've been asked a lot about. We're going to kind of dig in deep, and uh, I'll, I'll introduce him in just a moment, but I want to make sure I'm pulling up my agenda for tonight and making sure I got everything. The first thing uh, is if you haven't seen my video on th from Thursday, yesterday, uh, I did a little uh, reaction trailer to I Am R, um, which uh, I also announced my 4,000 subscriber giveaway. So that's cool. I have the stuff here that's going to somebody. It's going to somebody. And there's a couple of extra surprises I didn't show in the video that's going to go along with that package. Just somebody you have until... Uh, uh, my next live stream till next Friday when I'm going to announce the winner on air. So uh, go go do all the stuff that it says in that video. If you don't know about this, go to the IMR reaction trailer with the 4,000 subscriber giveaway. Again, it was posted just yesterday. There's a whole list of the rules and what you got to do to be eligible and how you can be eligible to win this really cool giveaway for celebrating 4,000 subscribers. And by the way, thank you guys so much. Um, today we're um, going to be talking about sleight of hand versus uh, gimmicks, and uh, we're going to introduce my friend Joe now, I think, and I want to make sure I get this exactly correct, okay? This is important to me. So uh, a lot of you haven't met Joe before. He's been on my channel, but it's been a really long time, seven, eight years, I think, something like that, a very long time. Uh, if you guys know the Apex Bomb deck, he is the creative force behind that. So, uh, something important to note there. A lot of you guys know about that deck. Um, he took his, he took show and not tell to kindergarten. He won his first international international magic competition at the age of nine. He's performed on three confidence, on confidence, three continents. Excuse me. He continues to innovate, and he is a dear friend of mine. Has been for many years well fi fi well at least the last 10 <laughs> <laughs> no for a very long time and i would like to introduce him now uh this is my friend joe southwell please everybody say hello and give him a warm welcome hi good to be here oh good to have you joe thanks for coming to green to do this oh i'm happy to this is um this is fun because we're we're doing this new tech thing because we, we did the dress rehearsal last night and trying to iron out all the bugs and even after that you still have people trolling you saying that the audio is not they working. They do this to me every time, Joe. They they go, audio's not working, because I've had a couple of instances in a row where the audio has not worked. Right. And uh I think this last week uh, my microphone was doing something weird and it gave me a demon voice. <laughs> and uh you keep it. You gotta figure out how to get that in there. <laughs> it was it was a uh, it was pretty terrifying but also wonderful because I had a well, my... a lot of magicians we get accused of uh, working with the devil and, and all these other kinds of things. And Oh, gosh. Um, there was a guy. His name was David. Um, he was at IHOP a lot uh, there in McKitty. And he, would always, he was always doing Bible study. But he, he was a nice guy. And he heard that I was a magician. And I'm a, I'm a Christian as well. And he, like, 
had a sit down conversation <laughs> about what you're doing is deception and it's wrong. I was like, but it's a show. Like, I don't try to pass it off. Do you like cartoons, I have David? Powers. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, I, and I, I sat there with him and indulged him for a long time and, and tried to. And I was like, okay, Jesus is telling parables. The parables didn't actually happen. Does that make Jesus a liar? You know, like, like how how hard can Te I lay this out for technically, you? Technically, yes. <laughs> and it was like, you know what? We're just going to have to agree to disagree, you know? And, and he, wow. he was doing it out of kindness, but it was just like, I think you've kind of lost the forest for the trees here. Well, did I tell you about the time that uh, I was doing magic for Coca-Cola at Six Flags? And uh, I was walking around, you know, doing, it was, it was the... The summer of magic, or something like this, or the magic of Coca Cola, or something. It was, right. And uh, they hired me to come around and, like, you know, um, tell everybody about their booth and, and mm -hmm. you know, kind of make it a big Coca Cola event. So I was walking around doing magic at Six Flags, and I went up to this guy and I said, "Hi, my name's Alan. I'm with Coca Cola. I'm helping uh, spread the spread the word about the magic of Coca Cola, and I'd like to show you uh, some magic, you know." And um, so he, all he does is he just goes. We don't believe in that kind of thing. And then like turns his back on me, like, like in the, like in the, like in the freaking Kumite and blood sport, you know, <laughs> I mean, that was, and I was like, cool, have a good day. You know, <laughs> oh, but, everyone's got more stories. I think we, we, oh, we, we could trade about sometime. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, I've got, I've got some, I've got some. Oh yeah. So Joe, the overarching yes. topic. Mm -hmm. At a very broad level, is very I've been broad. getting a lot of a lot of questions from people. Mm -hmm. um, that that could be on on Facebook. Which, by the way, if you're not uh, on my Facebook fan page or Instagram, go do that because that's a prerequisite to win the the contest here, the giveaway that I'm doing. But I've been asked on all these different platforms on YouTube as well. Um, you know, how do I feel about sleight of hand? Just like using pure sleight of hand. Mm -hmm versus uh the inclusion of gimmicks and i think the mm -hmm. point that they're trying to get across is um there's kind of a purist idea that that um why do i need to use gimmicks if i'm a magician i should be able to accomplish everything i want to do with sleight of hand and then all the problems that and guys too if you're um you know in the chat please leave a comment if you have anything you want to kind of like dig down and be a little bit more granular with but sure this kind of overarching and, and, and for the for the people um, watching at home, do be aware that I can't see the comments. So if, if you're asking something, um, he's going to have to see it and catch it and and ask me. So it, the way we're the way we got this freaked up, I just see myself and him, and everything else is going on through his place. So do be aware of that. Um, so it's not that I'm ignoring you; it's that he's not allowing me to. Engage. <laughs> That's I'm, just the horrible person I'm, that he is. I'm <laughs> curating. I'm curating. curating. I'm curating. Oh yeah. There's a right. there's there's a difference, right? I'm a publisher, not a platform, right? Uh, it's ironic we're saying that on YouTube. I know. <laughs> okay, so um, I know I know the idea. Um, I that's okay. If people did, if what we were doing was real, right? Um, then we would just have a magic wand, and then it, we'd be Harry Potter. We'd be Gandalf, right? Um, and that we would, might have a tool that just makes our magic work better, and then we would be able to do anything. Um, as far as like the, the purest, purest stuff, uh, that's no, no anything, uh, you're probably looking at cold reading, um, because that is literally just you and the other person. Uh, there might be some like mathematic things you could walk through, or stories you could tell, or little paradoxes and puzzles, uh, if you're, if you're going to go for purest. Um, but I don't... <laughs> I don't think the goal is pure is purity in terms of magic. Um, that's that's something that's interesting at um, especially for other magicians. But at a certain point, that means that your audience is other magicians, right? Right. Uh, which is fine. Like if you're if you're at a convention, if you're you know doing IBM or SAM or FISM or TOM or or any of any of the conventions, we're selling um, magic to magicians. We're selling magic to <laughs> magicians, right? Any but any time where where that's the case, um, then okay, they might care. Um, when it comes to things like, am I going to use a gaff? Am I not going to use a gaff? It's 
it's just the wrong question, right? I mean, like, there's not another way I can explain it. Like, if, if that's what you're concerned about, you're asking the wrong question. Well, and, right? you know, like, if I can jump yeah. in there, I, I, of course. I, I agree. Whenever the first thing that I see, whenever I hear sleight of hand versus gimmicks or whatever, whenever that argument mm -hmm. comes up, it, it feels like a very egotistical question. Um, it, it has to do because it, I think if you are in that in just that frame of mind, you may not even realize it. But if you're asking, should I be doing sleight of hand or should I do being, be using gimmicks or some combination of the two or whatever? Mm -hmm. I think what you're really asking is, is, hey, um, or what you're really saying, rather, is that your experience performing magic is is more important to gratifying your ego than it is necessarily putting on a show for your audience. What's going to be the best show for your audience, I think, ultimately, is right. the best question. Yeah. And, and, and the best show falls into a number of, there's a number of things that comes into best show, right? Um, if you, if you have a lot of manual skill, you are more likely to be able to do an impromptu effect anytime, right? So you can always pull out coins. You can always, you can improvise with whatever you have around you because you don't have to have some special gimmick pin. This isn't a special gimmick pin. I just like fountain pens. And so, um, it's gimmicked. But it's gimmicked. It's gaffed. It's clearly gaffed, right? It's got a magnet uh, but... in it. No, it just snaps. Push it through a bill and prove uh, it. <laughs> but um, so there's if you're if you're going the the pure, I want to say pure, the more sleight of hand skill you have, the easier it is to work with whatever you have at hand. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, and there, there's a freedom that comes in that. Um, there's a reliability that comes in that uh, you don't have to worry about a gaff not working. You don't have to worry about um, somebody <laughs> reaching into something where they're not supposed to see it. You don't have to worry about any number of different things. And a show going well is part of the entertainment, right? So I'm not saying, well, do it this way, but you need to think of it from a utilitarian perspective in terms of operations. It, to me, that's, that's kind of where that question belongs. Um, and only then, in such a way that you should be asking about a specific gap or a specific slide or a specific skill set, um, because it's like, well, should I should I use tools or should I use something sneaky or not? Oh, what's, what's going to do the better show? Yeah, right? yeah. And we, t I mean, we t we we did talk about this kind of leading up a little bit, and mm -hmm. you know, for me, uh, I do try I, I do favor sleight of hand over gimmicks but that doesn't mean i don't mm -hmm. i don't think gimmicks have their place oh right um but i i because again i i've said it a lot of times on the show i feel like uh like i'm trying to prove something or something but i'm a full-time working professional magician that's right. what i do and for me if i i want to choose the the smallest po i got i got to worry about pocket management you have pocket so, management, you have reliability, you have if things go wrong, you, if you have... The less that can go wrong. Less that can go more wrong. stuff I can get to. <laughs> exactly. Which I, I won't, I won't say his name, but we, we, we both know a, another redheaded magician who has a show that's pretty much all the other way and it terrifies the crap out of me. I, won't, I don't want to say his name on air. He's a... He's I'll a, say, no, no, Trig's awesome. <laughs> He's a, no, he's, he's good. Like, he's, he, he's amazing. He's he's he is very a talented. Creative force. He's very creative. The amount of tech that goes into his show is astounding. It's, not not just, crap not out just of me. for like not just for gaps or slides or, or little things Custom here and there. Everything. Custom everything. Everything is high tech, right? So like, even the stuff that, that you wouldn't consider a gaff, right? He's still got stuff on top of that yeah he's he's basically the batman yeah, it, of magic it's it scares the hell out of me too right like, and and i've seen it go wrong on stage and he and he knows how to handle his tech going wrong well yes because i've seen him <clears throat> i mean like but the thing is if you guys don't know you guys probably don't know trig um he was he, I, unless you've been a long time viewer of the channel but he came on here for a while back he's a creative consultant on magic for humans um, he is a, a, a longtime friend of mine. I've known him since two, 2008 and, um, it won TAOM that year for, for stage mm -hmm. competition. He's a very, <clears throat> very talented, very highly skilled magician with a mm -hmm. completely unique show. Nobody does anything like him. Um, but he has Everyone's a very afraid to, he's got too much tech going on. He's, he, I, he scares the hell out of me. And I've talked to right. him about this. I was like, what if you forget to recharge something or something's yeah. not plugged in or, uh, you know, you didn't put the thing with the other thing. You got or... batteries, you got loaded. I mean, he, and he does it, he does it well. 
right? And I've and I've seen him. But he's uh, intense. So he shows up really, really well. He's very intense. Um, I have seen uh, one thing. He had, he had an issue one time on the show I saw, and he was having trouble with it. But he was like, "If you folks could give me just a second. He did very good audience management. Um, <clears throat> so even when his tech does fail, he knows how to deal with this. Not just oh, okay, I guess we yeah, can't do that. Yeah, there's crazy and polish so on top of what he's doing. Right. So it's and I would never have thought you would ever want to do anything that high tech, but he brings a level of creativity to it. And when it doesn't go well, when there's technical issues, he's got, he knows how to handle it. Uh, I got I got handles it. Well, I got a message here from, uh, from Justin two cards. He says, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he says, uh, he says, uh, when possible, I like to do sleight of hand because I want Mm -hmm. to feel like the astonishment on the spectator was caused by my hard work and learned Mm -hmm. skill Versus feeling like I paid for it. And I've heard a similar comment. I was given a, a similar comment um, or kind of in that vein mm-hmm. uh, last night on Facebook. Um, uh, Alex, or AMS magician, who's a longtime uh, watcher of the channel too, mm-hmm. he was messaging me, talking about how he felt like gimmicks were, you were too locked into the routine for the gimmick. You, you, you can be. Um, I mean, I think we've seen magicians kind of when they're early on and, and getting started, they have like several different packets. <laughs> and so they're like, pull out this one packet and then do this packet trick and then put it away and then put that away. Oh, here's another packet. And then we're going to open it up and do this packet trick and then put that away. It's like, this is the most unnatural, like have a deck of cards, do something with a, with a napkin, you know, do something else. But this is like, it's very, very rigid. You have 20 packet um, tricks. You're 20 doing... packet tricks. Just, you're just carry a deck of pack. cards, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and, but you got to start somewhere, right? I'm not trying That's to do it. No, no, no. Yeah. If you got those packets. I had that. Hey, I used to wear, I used to buy only cargo I pants. So I could put decks of cards in all my cargo pants. Right. <laughs> I um, had like six decks of cards on me all the time. And yeah. That's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> um, oh man. But we, we all went through that, right? Cause yeah. you're at the magic store, you're learning this and you, and you see one. And so you get it home and you, and you learn it and you practice and you practice and you practice and okay. And now, now you can perform this thing. And, and the first thing you got to do is, is at least learn it well enough to where you're not giving it away. Right, yeah. we're not going to reveal anything in the effect, and then eventually you can kind of either take their routine or um, adapt their routine, or eventually you're getting to where you're sort of like, okay, well, here's actually the way this piece works. Can I do it my own way? Can I create a completely different effect with the same tools, um, like uh, like Hot Rod? Okay, that, that, that's a classic first first starter, right? It teaches a really basic slide of hand. Um, and uh, some some forcing principles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you get two. It, it's the best first effect I think for anyone, really. Oh, it's great! It feels, yeah, it, teaches, it feels yeah. easy. The interaction's good, um, and it often comes with with two, so that you can hand it out afterwards, mm-hmm. right? I lost the I lost the one to hand out because I never found the comfortable way I was good at at, at swapping them. And I was like, okay, well, the one doesn't change. Right, right. There aren't any like things to push or adjust. It's it's a fixed nothing, object. Nothing spins. Nothing, nothing spins. Uh, nothing slides torques, out of the way. Right? Yeah. Um, and so what I would do is I would just act like I locked it with one side rainbow and the other side um, all the same, and then hand it to them. Yeah. And then watch them try and figure out how to unlock it. Like yeah. there isn't anything it's to already, unlock. <laughs> it's already to them. It's already an impossible object, right? Right, so. right. And, so, and then, and then to, just to be able to hand it to them, right, without having to do any kind of crazy switching or something like that, because it, it's eyes are so hot. Right. On, on your, well, yeah, uh, your hands are getting burned really, really hard at that point, right? And, and they want to see it, and so to be able to just okay, right, I'm going to fix Here. it this way. I'm going to fix it this way. Here you go. Like, no, I didn't, yeah, watch him play with that for a long time trying to figure it out. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's that's slight. Is that a gaff? I mean, if you feel like you have to return it to the rainbow at all one side, is that well, yeah, I, mean, I think down? then we like, could also think, where's the line, you know? Well, um, I mean, there's a whole other part here to this too, which I don't know mm-hmm. if, um, I don't know if it was intended in this, I think it's in the spirit of the question. Mm-hmm. but not necessarily uh, di- directly st- stated, just kind of inferred, mm-hmm. um, is, well, what about props? Because I think props would have their completely own uh, category compared to 
say gimmicks or sleight of hand because props are uh you know the things you do magic with right? right so again to your point if you were just doing you know straight up cold reading or if you're doing bark elson's conversations it's mentalism or something like that where you're doing right. you know um yeah i mean because well because it's like well at some point depending i think it depends on the scale because if you're talking about close-up magic um that you may you may be able to get away with just being a sleight of hand purist but mm-hmm. if you're doing state grand stage illusion you're not doing yeah. sleight of hand you're you're right like this box was purpose built to cut a lady in half that's right. all it you know, does right? right this is the yeah, zigzag you know, illusion this is i mean like you don't uh you don't just oh you purist somebody, i'm not gonna use it like yeah i'm not gonna use it yeah i'm not gonna use any, any gaffed what buckets i don't know what else you would use that would that you would put somebody in like a like a 50 gallon drum or something well houdini did that uh, yeah <laughs> well but it was still it was still good. it was that milk, milk carton kit. thing didn't exist until he built it, right? Like it just kind of looked like the other milk carton stuff. Yeah. Um, but but like there aren't props that big or things out in the world um, very commonly, aside from like fifty gallon drums, that you could put a person into anyway. So to try to say I'm not going to use a gaff to anything, I'm not going to use anything like that. Like well, you get to a certain size, especially with Grand Illusion, you have to. You have to. Right? There's no other um, way. <laughs> Right. It's not, I mean, it's, it's grand illusion. Um, that's the thing. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it can scale. Um, uh, I personally think mentalism, uh, scales better than grand illusion. Uh, cause if you, yeah, I'm, I've been that kid cause I've done, I've done grand illusion. Um, and at a certain point you just become a glorified furniture mover. Yeah. And <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. That's all you are. Uh, so, <laughs> Okay, you with, you with, wheel this with, box on, you wheel this box on, on and then the girl appears or she disappears, and you wheel this box on, you can bring this one out, and you know. This one makes a tiger appear. This one a cuts a lady appear. in half. This right. one does okay. it. Yeah. Okay. All all right. the things for, there. For 45 minutes. Yeah, 45 minutes of people getting in and out of furniture. Um, <laughs> It's, but, but, oh man, you know, we're gonna have some grand illusion guy oh, just come out here and just roast us. No, it's. I mean, I think I think every school of magic has has a good time, kind of making fun of all the others, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Because well, what the grand illusion guys like, you look at sort of the the play back and forth. It's like, okay, how are you making this box fascinating, and uh, and why are you making pe- how are you making people care about this box, and why would you think anybody wouldn't question this weird box that nobody's ever seen before that you've only had, and da 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 da. Right, but people and, don't actually care. People don't care, right? Because right. it's they're for the most part they're not trying to see the impossible, right? For the most part, they're trying to be entertained. That's what your audience is there for. They're they're there. That's why they came to see you is to be entertained. Um. So to to assume that the, the mistake magicians make is thinking their art is magic. It's not. It's entertainment. Magic's the tool. Yep. And so, um when you're asking those kinds of questions, it's like, hey, you know what, if if you're into magic for yourself, right, to, to learn the skills or you just enjoy it's a hobby, just I mean, enjoy it's a doing hobby, it, learning about it, and... things, then the answer is whichever one you prefer, right? right. If, if you like these gaffes and you like, hey, there's something sitting on the shelf and somebody comes by, oh, what's that? And you can just instantly oh. do this mind boggling thing because it, it's, you know, it's a Rude Goldberg of gaffes. Okay, cool, right? Because um, that's why you have it. That's why you're doing it. Right. right. Um, if you're doing it, if you're into magic, because um, again, not even on the professional side, but just to be able to kind of lighten things up or have fun around people or meet people or entertain or just more of a social magician. Right. Bar magician. Bar well, magician, yeah. social magician, whatever you call it. Right. Then, then it makes sense to be heavy on the skill side, right, on the slide side, because you're more likely to be interacting with with sort of random objects right, right. otherwise Borrowed you're carrying thing. a Svengali deck in your pocket all the time and you can only do that's crazy like a Svengali routine but you can't do anything else with the deck of cards um with that deck of cards and so, you do not want to do any kind of Svengali deck at, with a group of drunk people yeah. <laughs> like I'm just thinking of the uh that's 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 a I mean as part I guess also that's something that I hadn't I hadn't considered whenever we uh you know I was drawing up the kind of the talking points and everything but this is something that you know, if I know what kind of situation I'm going into, that may play a, a big role in whether or not I'm using just pure sleight of hand or if I'm using gimmicks. If I'm in a controlled environment, 
um, with people that I know that are going to be respectful of the art and the kind of the yeah. boundaries and stuff, then yeah, I might, I might feel more comfortable using uh, gimmicks. Like I might use a coin and bottle or something, but if I'm right. like, if I'm going to like a house party and I know everybody there is going to be wild and crazy and everything and want to grab stuff out of your hands, mm-hmm. you better believe I'm not doing anything that's kind of right. even, you know, <clears throat> close uh, to, yeah. to looking silly or, or off. Well, and, and then you got stuff like the Apex Bomb deck, right? Where it will behave like a standard deck of cards and all the all the gaffes in it do not inhibit that function in any yes. way. Okay. It just allows you to do additional things that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Where are you running off to? I'm listening. I'm listening. Oh. I... Does this it? Oh, you're grabbing the deck. I was grabbing <clears> the deck, yeah. So, um, right. like So that was why we designed that deck that way. Um, Such because it still it still works as a functional deck of cards, but all the all the stuff in it allows you to do more, and th- and I think that's part of where some of the gaffes come into a problem, right? Is when the gaff is to the point where you can't use it for almost anything else, right? Right, and and it like you can't use a coin and bottle for coin for almost any other type of coin magic right it's, it's very that's there, it and that's what it there does there are a couple of things you can do with it the, yeah but, but but it's mostly for coin and bottle right it's I mostly mean, for coin and bottle you right can do the and whole, then uh, well I'll <laughs> go go look up jb bobo's modern coin magic if you want to see some other stuff so you can do with the coin and bottle coin right but, uh, <laughs> link in the description well, <laughs> there's not but there will be whenever you watch this <laughs> um and then you have the issue of, okay, when you have gaffes on things that look natural, mm-hmm. then you have to be sure you can tell which ones are which. I know where right? you're going with this. Because, um, <laughs> you, might, you might end oh. up putting a scotch and soda into a toll. I, you might. You, you might, might do that. If you were might you do that, Alan? What? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I did that. Um, that was an expense. That was a very expensive toll. So a toll yeah. that should have cost me fifty cents cost me about yeah. forty bucks. Yeah, right. And, <laughs> I threw a Johnson and with, Scotch and soda set into the little. Mm-hmm. Okay, metal kids. Funnel. So way back when, before we all had toll tags stuck to our cars, there used to be baskets that you would drive up to and throw you would money literally in. push, throw the money into the basket in order to go on. Before that's how toll roads used to work, kids. Back back in the day. Back in the day, how you feeling old yet? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> um, but yeah, I knew I knew somebody else that did the same thing. And the most frustrating part is because it didn't weigh the right amount. <laughs> he didn't even get credit for the toll. <laughs> <So> it, <laughs> oh, because it no. because it was checking the coins, right? right. And it's like, no, that's not a legitimate coin. <laughs> Like he, so, he didn't even get to go. Th- he didn't he even didn't pay even the toll. The, he didn't even get to get credit for the toll. Oh right? I mean, no! Oh, yeah. Oh so no! Yeah, like they'll they'll get, and coins are starting to disappear anyway. Yeah. Right? Because uh, we're going. Ah, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> oh, like this. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you, you don't hear these horror stories of you know really expensive, very nice gaff coins getting put into vending machines and tolls and and different Ooh. things like that. Because if you're if you're gonna have um, if you're gonna if you're gonna go that route that's that's fine just be very aware of which one it is um, where you're keeping it how you're storing it um, a lot of people will I've seen them kind of like scratch or or mar the gaff in some way that they'll be able to know that it is a gaff and which gaff it is mm-hmm. um, you know something and, clever I saw on that on that note too is with. Uh decks of cards and I, I think it was uh god who was it that showed me this oh what's his name michael weber okay michael weber uh what he does is with his decks of cards he'll he'll print off he'll just get like a like a label uh you know label paper or something mm-hmm. and then he'll he'll have a copy of that seal mm-hmm. but instead of saying the united states playing card company on the inside of the spade it'll say invisible deck or it'll say whatever, so that way he can just grab these off a shelf, and he can know immediately by the seal what right. deck is in there. And that's like I thought that was just a, a really. Or cool if you're pulling deck. one out, and then you look, and you're like, I've got the wrong deck, and you're like, Well, what do you mean the wrong? You can't back out at that point, and so, but then you could look down and immediately like, I need to twist this routine in this direction. We're now. going. We're going. I had a plan, we're but we're going this way now. We're going this way now. Yeah. 
Um, it's those kinds of things. So if, if you want to go gas, great. Um, there, there are some amazing things you can do that only work with gaps, right? Yeah. There's, there's not a sleight of hand way to do a Svengali deck. No, right. Not really. Um, no, there isn't. Right. And sometimes, you know, you use a Svengali deck just because it's easy and it looks clean to force. Yeah. Right. Um, cause I'm, I'm not, I'm not above that. Uh, not so, when it need when it needs to work. When it needs to work. Right. Sometimes 100%. it needs to work. It just, yeah. Um, why hmm. why even leave that up to chance i uh, i'll give you a great example of um just when it needs to work uh my one of my first mentors uh lynn Sparagost, he's passed away and i made this this amazing um uh, memorized deck right but the part that made it so cool is beforehand he he did do a room full of magicians right he hands the deck out and has anybody cut shuffle mix it up anything they want to right any which way they want any way they want and then he takes the deck back and, and brings this board over and goes, okay, name a card. And I'll tell you how far down it is, right? And they name the card and he counts it up, right? And like is laying the cards up there so everybody can see they're all different in the order they're in, right? And he was right. And he collects it and puts it back. And so now, even as he's doing it, he's effectively rotating the cards. Mixing the it. deck as he's... Mixing the deck as he's doing it, right? Yeah. And, um, and it was, yeah, he could name... If they named the number, he could name the card. If they named the card, he could name the number, Right. And so it was, it was really impressive because it was, you know, memorized deck, but everybody had shuffled it beforehand. That sounds pretty And, cool. um, it was like, and so he's going through teaching how to, how to, how to memorize the order of the deck and the, and the mathematics involved. So it was like, but everybody shuffled it. How did you, oh, he goes, oh, and he turns the board around and there's this like great big pouch that he dumped the deck. <laughs> and above it, there's this little, little pouch where he pulled that deck. Out. He's like, oh, you don't want to worry with that deck. That deck is useless. <laughs> you, just, you can't do the trick with that deck. <laughs> trick with that deck. It's useless at that point, right? <laughs> like the fact that he completely stack it and then stick it right there. No chance he's not going to get this wrong deck or he's going to have it shuffled the wrong way or he's going to have to you know, have some way of, of restore, only tell people to cut and hope nobody gets, gets clever. Was that know? a size seven stack or something? What he's I, I honestly can't remember at this uh, point. I just remember him turning that board around going, oh, that deck's useless. Don't even use that. <laughs> can't use that one. <laughs> that one? Why would you use that deck? <laughs> I thought you were going to tell the story about the Dove. Oh, the Dove. The no, Dove what? production in Texas. That didn't go well. My Dove production? No, it wasn't yours. It was another magician's, but you, you were witness to it. I think I think it happened in Michigan. It might have been at at, uh, at Colon, Michigan. But you tell me about a, a dove that was um, uh, in the harness too long, and uh, whenever they produced it, all right, I'll just I'll tell the story. I don't know where I okay. heard. Okay. Do you know Do you know the story? Well, I know I know of uh, I had a dove incident. Um, back when I yeah. So is this your story? It might have been my story. Um. Well, tell me, and then I'll tell you. Okay, so yeah, if we're talking about gaps, and while we're talking about, we'll talk horror stories and gaps, right? And, and <laughs> I was doing um, kind of a variant on uh, on the rice bowls, and uh, so I had glitter and garbanzo beans and a lot of streamers, and the final thing was going to be this dove that came out of the bowls at the end, right? Okay. And um, because I'd, I'd built the effect, I'd built the harness for the dove, and uh, <laughs> and I get to the end. And I hit the the release for the harness because it was elastic, mm -hmm. right? And it comes off. Right. But during the act, the dove had like shifted and a strap had gotten across its neck. Mm. And, and it was just like, okay, right under the table. And you go on to the next piece. And it's like, I'm going to have to deal with this later. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just killed this dove. Um, oh, fortunately, it only passed out. Oh, good. Um, That's better than the story that I... <laughs> I, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I think I know the way you're talking about that. Where a guy, it was a, it was an invisible um, harness, and with that one, it's it's out there, right? And so um, there's no. Way I, to, I could look at the bowl uh, and be like, "That's a problem," right? And just not okay. produce it. But uh, if if you if the animals, all living things pass, right? And so um, they do. They do. Yes, uh, you do have that issue. Um, and yeah, he, he <laughs> produced a dead dove and, and it, it, it wasn't in any way that could have been hidden, right? Like, like mine, it, it <laughs> oh, had, as I thought it was. Right. So he like brings it out and it's there. <laughs> so he's like, having to, like trying to bounce it as, he, as he's like, <laughs> putting it away. <laughs> he's like, this thing along. Oh my God. You know, like, it was a bunch of magicians oh. in the audience. 
they were like, oh, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh man. That so poor bad. bird. Like, I had the bird and everything. I mean, <sighs> it's, I mean, you're seeing less and less um, animals in Axe now. I think, I think the only of... person that I, that I know um, that does animal magic is, uh, is Dan Sperry. I think he's the only one. And he's 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 amazing dove work, and mm-hmm. it's so weird. I don't know if you, I don't know if you've seen Dan Sperry. You know who he is, but he's a very goth magician, very skinny guy. Wears he's kind of got a Marilyn Manson aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> does a lot of like um, like stuff with voodoo and black magic yeah. and you yeah. know, um, super like supernatural stuff. But but yeah, they, you're seeing you're seeing less and less animals, but yeah, but he's got an amazing dove act, and you go, you look at him, and you go. Really? Doves? <laughs> Doves? Like, okay. okay. But okay, but he, he, it works. And he does it. It's right. awesome. It's awesome. He's a very, very good. Uh... We, we, we've kind of strayed pretty far oh, away. Oh, we have. We have. No question. So, um, but th- 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 those are kind of the things that matter, right? When, it, when you're making these decisions about sleight of hand or, or gaffes, um, when it comes to, you know, gaffy or even tools, right? Like, is, is an ITR gaff? Uh, it's a tool. Is a, is a... There's, there's not a sleight of hand way to do that. Um, no, no, there's no. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, you, I guess you could, if you wanted to be reductionist, you could say, well, uh, I guess you're not doing any animations or levitations if you're pure, pure sleight of hand, right? Uh, you know, and... there's, there's some jokey ones like the the raise the card and uh, yeah. The, if you guys don't know about that, this thing right here. Yeah, but I always do that as a joke. Where you, like, it's, oh, whatever. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, it's yeah. And, and where do you, where do you draw that line? I mean, the thing is, is I I I don't. I, I always, for me, it's like I want for most of the effects that I have mm-hmm. uh, that I perform that that do require a gimmick. I try to have mm-hmm. a the best non gimmicked version that I can. And, right. and the reason I have that, that's a backup for me. So that way, if I'm out performing, I have a little bit of a reputation. Some people have seen me other places. I was, I did a, did a house party a couple of weeks ago. Turns out uh, they saw me at their uh, law firm's Christmas party last year. So like okay. that kind of stuff happens and people will see me multiple times, you know, different places or I'll do festivals and fairs and people see me right. and stuff. So if I'm not carrying that thing that makes me, that does that, does that special, whatever, Mm-hmm. I want to, uh, if if that's like, hey, can you do the thing for? I brought my friends the, the thing you did the other night, or you know, at that right. party was amazing or whatever. And you want to be able to, you know, produce if that. You're able to, yeah. I mean, depending if, on the effect, because you know, first times. In yeah, time, yeah. But if it's been like six months, a year, yeah. or something, they're still talking about it, and they're kind of fuzzy in some of the details, but they know sure. it was amazing. Then doing some kind of variation of that is really cool. I've been doing yeah. this ten. And it, and it doesn't years. take much variation for people to not even realize it's the same thing. Right. And so, like, I like to have that as a backup and as something mm-hmm. that I can do and whatever. It also gives me ways to do yeah. it impromptu, which is cool if I didn't think mm-hmm. I was going to be performing, but I want to, like, pull out right. some cool stuff. And, and, and these, these, are the, these are the better questions to be asking, right, as opposed to gaffes or no gaffes, right? Slide of hand or, or technical Yeah, whatever. I mean, if you got them um, and it's the only way to accomplish the effect or the only good way – to right. Or, fact, do right. it. Do it. Right. Or, or is, is it? And you might be in a situation where the gaff is more reliable than a sleight of hand. Sure. And yeah. maybe that's a it, better choice for that slot. Um, yeah. I mean, that could be like Ray's Rise, for instance. Uh, Ray, Ray Cosby's Ray, Ray's Rise. Are you familiar with this effect? Mm-mm. It's stupid. <laughs> and when I say stupid, I mean it's 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 jaw droppingly gorgeous and amazing, but there's only one person on the planet that can do it and it's Ray Cosby. Okay. Um, so basically the effect is you have a card inserted somewhere low in the deck and just by shaking like this, it'll go up through the deck, you know, raising its position every once in that until it's on top of the deck. And he does it purely with sleight of hand, but uh, it is, I mean, you could spend the rest of your life working on that. It's, right. It's ridiculous the amount of skill and effort that goes into to, to doing something like that. Mm-hmm. Where if you wanted to do there there are there are plenty and I you know, uh there are plenty of gimmicked ways to do this that look really great and are reliable and you can do them. And so mm-hmm. like, you know, people want to say, Oh the, one of the other comments I heard and I've been reading is um, you know, well, 
that back to I guess Justin Two Cards comment, which was um, you know feeling like they were producing the magic of themselves instead of just mm-hmm. buying a, a a superpower, right? That they right. that they 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 want to be one punch man of well, magic, okay. right? And, and you know, to this point. Um, they want to be if Superman, you, not Batman. If you have the skill yourself, you'll always have that skill, right? You won't if if something goes wrong with the with the packet or whatever, <clears throat> you'll be able to do that anywhere, mm-hmm. right? So what you're actually developing is the freedom um, that the other person won't have, right? Right. It's it's not purchased superpower; it's earned freedom, right? right? It's earned uh, liberty. It, it's it, yeah, it's, well, that's something right? that, because it, it, it can, can free can up. The, you can hand it to the audience afterwards, right? It, you are able to do so many more things um, in terms of, of your options. If, uh, if, can you, I need to take care of something real quick. Sure. Yeah, so, I'll take over. Sorry, well, excuse Joe, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll pop over here and talk to your guys' uh, questions or answer. Um, I'm reading the comments here, so if you guys have anything you want to say or add to, I would love to uh, make sure that we're asking Joe questions that are uh, that you want to ask. And if I miss something, please let me know I missed something. Um, can you do basic basic sleight of hand at a gig and then be okay Sorry, with it? Sorry, someone was at the door, and it's a really strange hour, and so I needed to check. Sure, no, I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm going yeah. through the comments right now and uh, sure. kind of reading what's, what's the... AMS is here. Hey, AMS, thanks for being here tonight. Um, so big hand says, I feel when liquor is involved, they want to understand the harder slights and be bored. That's all up to routining and, and knowing your audience and know and the experience on how to perform for them. I can perform yeah. for some very drunk people, but you could do this depending on the, on the drunks, you can do that. And right. Boy. So, I mean, I don't okay, know. If that's you're, a... you're trying to, you're trying to be entertaining. I think one of my best, um, impromptu, uh, drunken performances, <laughs> we, were, we were all pretty trashed but um is that, is this the but thing I, ended, I ended up like straight up robbing something from from houdini right just uh by creating uh, a partner across the table from me where I, w- I would pick up a card and then try and signal it and i was tapping his foot under the table right like, is it a high card or a low card <laughs> so it's a low card <laughs> okay uh, what number is it? <laughs> it's a three, right? And everybody around mine is just, how is he doing? Because the other person wasn't a magician, right? Yeah. Well, what, that's, it, uh, that's actually... a red card I, or a black card? Is it a club or a spade? You know? <laughs> I remember attending attending <laughs> a lecture at TAOM. It was, um, yeah. oh gosh, what's his name now? He, did, Oh, uh, Pop Hayden. Yeah, Pop. Oh, yeah, he's fun. Pop's, Pop's amazing. He's one of the most entertaining people I've ever seen in, in real life, you know? But mm-hmm. he um, he used that exact same principle for performing for uh, for the blind. Yes. If you had yes. if you had somebody in the group that was blind and you still want to do magic, you go, oh well, you know that's not cool because you know you don't want to be like everybody else being a sighted person mm-hmm. enjoying the thing while you have the one person who can't see anything. Yeah, because they think, oh well, there's sponge balls because no, 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 very tactile, no. They'll, it doesn't work like that. No. So what you do is you make them the star of the show, which you should be doing mm-hmm. anyway, right? So you go right. That's cool, right? I've had I've had that happen a couple of times. At, that's it's also one of the reasons I uh, I know how to finger spell and sign language and I know based some basic signs. Right. You'll meet people who are hard of hearing or deaf, or you'll find mm-hmm. people who are um, blind or or very can't see very well at all. Mm-hmm. And to be able to perform for everybody mm-hmm. is really cool. So being yeah. able to do this that that exact thing you're talking about, doing the foot tapping thing, yeah, just do that under the table. And now that person looks so incredibly amazing, right. and it just blows everybody else. And they're not going to tell and, how it works. And, and they, no, they never say how that works. Never, sure. never. They, but they can tell by everybody else's reaction that it's working. That is like, holy crap, this is cool. Oh my gosh, man! And, oh yeah, and I still remember because I, I was doing that. I was like, there's no way. There's too many people here. I was sitting in kind of a raised position, so there was a chance anybody could have. No, nobody's looking at your feet. Everybody gets intense, and they ended up like covering his eyes and insisting that my hands like stay unplanted on the table, and and that you know like 
they're, they tried to cover my eyes and I was like, I have to actually see the card, guys. <laughs> so they're like, okay, fine. But they're like covering in front of my face and just holding the card here. And he's still able to get it. And they're like, well, it's in what, what question you're asking, right? And, it was, and so- Are you like- <laughs> well then you ask the questions and they were like okay is, is it is it red or black and i'd like you know the second one you know? <laughs> is it a face card or a number card <laughs> so, it was great right that's cool so it's, it's those kinds of things and yeah you could do that kind of stuff with drunk people like if you're like well the drunk people aren't following the cover well then you're playing it too small you're trying to do something that they need to remember which is not good for drunk people don't don't give them anything that you are worried about them messing with or don't expect them to remember anything right okay. that, well that's, that, doesn't mean, that doesn't mean they can't have fun right that doesn't mean there aren't things beyond that you just have to do something a little more visual a little more simple but that just because the effect is simple doesn't mean that the illusion or that it's not entertaining right so, right well you don't, uh, you don't need to have these really complex all the i have a red deck of cards over here and a blue deck of cards over here and if i draw this and you sign with a, a purple sharpie and i'll let you sign with an orange sharpie and then we'll shuffle it like don't don't who cares guys let's like, slow down <laughs> just make it simple right yeah. it's, it's meant to be entertaining and, and then again the magic is the tool right um not well yeah, again so. that's you know back to the divernon adage which was you know uh, the best magic effects could be described simply in one sentence, you know? Yeah. So that's a good rule to have, especially whenever you're performing for people who are drunk. Mm -hmm. um, this also reminds me of the DVD project that we had uh, thought about making. We never, we never did. No. Nope. Um, but the, the magic without cups. Mm -hmm. All balls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just like, like just the effects were like, yeah. The, the boldest, you know, effects oh, yeah. they could possibly do. Like, there's no way that yeah, anybody would fall for that. People will fall for, the, for the, what, what people will fall for. Well, it so. amazes me. Sometimes, you know, I'll do something. I'll be in the middle of a, I'll be like in the zone, right? Yeah. That where everything's you, clicking and you everything. Know you're there. Yeah. Everything is working and the people just, they love you and they adore mm -hmm. and you. And everything you do is just perfect. And you control the audience and everybody, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. It's and it's, it's it's a wonderful feeling when you get in that spot. Mm -hmm. uh, but you'll do something as simple as this. And people will go, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, it's, like, <laughs> it's like, I didn't even do it. But you just, yeah. but you take credit for it. I was telling somebody that tonight at a, when I was performing at the yeah. restaurant. Um, you know, I have this effect where a card's torn into to four into four quarters. And then it, mm -hmm. it, it um, uh, goes back together. It's a torn and restored sure. in the right. spectator's hand. Okay. And the kid opens up his hand and he goes, oh, I didn't do this. I didn't. And I was like, dude, take credit. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I, was, I was like, you know, if somebody, if, if somebody asks yeah. you, if you're a God, you say yes. <laughs> right. The next time. <laughs> Going to get the movie references in there. Um, but, but that's another example of, some, of, of an advantage of, of learning things with slight. Right. Yeah. Is, because the more you can make the other person the magical one, uh, the more you can let the magic happen in someone else's hands, the more impact and the better it's going to be. Um, magic is one of the very, very few crafts that that's even an option, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can't, uh, like a musician can't like Give you hand the you other person a guitar, right? Um, jugglers can like maybe have you throw something in and then kind of go at it uh or have you there's, there's some there's jugglers can do some right there's limitations right um yeah clowns comedians will will banter back and forth with their audience but it's, it, it's they're not, still the funny one right yeah. they're still the funny one they're they're you come using to see the special man effect. yeah or woman um, right and so but magic is one of the few where you can actually make the other person um the the amazing one. The so one. why don't you, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah, you definitely should. It's almost a, it's yeah, almost ma a magic, moral magic mandate. Has so few advantages uh, and a lot of disadvantages uh, when it comes to um, as a as an entertainment as an art style. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's often prop heavy. It takes a lot of time to learn. Um, it people sometimes have bad ideas about magicians they, they don't trust them those kinds of things um so that's one of the few things that magicians can do 
right? That well, and I have to almost no other one can 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 do. So put the magic in their hands and make them the amazing ones as much as possible. Everybody will know um, that you did it. That right? you did it. But you know, but whatever. They'll have a better experience. It'll just yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be like, look how amazing I am. You know, what's better than um, than than trumpeting for yourself is to let other people <laughs> realize that you're amazing without mm-hmm. you having to tell them. Yeah. Right. Uh, when people when you people remember how you made them feel, mm-hmm. it's going to go a lot further than. And people remember you know, that so much more. They do. I think that's the reason that I that I get work. People don't even remember the card they chose. They don't sometimes. even care. Like, you, I mean, it was not... it was thirty seconds ago, buddy. Like especially when they're drunk, but like. That's not what they remember. Oh, uh, but, life hack for that. Make sure everybody sees the card. Yes. <laughs> I, I've done remember. that so many times because I'll do that, you know, uh, especially in the restaurant. The kids are the ones mm-hmm. who are usually put, uh, you know, to do the stuff instead of the adults. So right. the kids don't even know the suits or anything. They just know it was a red card and it had a number on it, or, you know. So right. I go, hey, make sure you show it to everybody. You know, mm-hmm. and then whenever they put it back in, if 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 it's a situation where they're removing it and then replacing it, I always avert my gaze when they're replacing it until the deck is back closed. And I've I've had that save me so many awkward things because parents were going, oh oh oh, oh and I'm like, no, I'm okay, all right, I'm over here. I was like, I perform for a lot of drunk people before. I you know, <laughs> I got this. I know how to make sure that I that the trick isn't yeah. isn't messed up by this small thing, you know? Right. Um, I, I, and that, but, that only comes with practicing with a, with a real audience. So. Yeah, you don't know what's going to go wrong. I mean, you can plan no. for everything in the world. Uh, David Williamson talked about this. He was doing this uh, effect where it was a transposition between a spoon and a fork, which is actually, it's, it's a really cool effect to do in a restaurant. And if you don't know about it, go look it up. But um, he said that he when he was thinking about this effect, you have to have... Um, you have to have something palmed in your hand. I don't want to reveal the effect, but you have to have something palmed in your hand. Um to make the effect work and he said when i was thinking about this he was like well i would just uh you know early in my career i would just walk up and i would say oh you know i wouldn't have to retrieve anything from my pocket it would just be palmed in my hand to start and i could hold it very you know comfortably and i could go into the Mm -hmm. routine he goes and it would work great i could just open with that and be great and he goes the first table that i went to and performed this for goes oh hi my name's gary Right. Shit, right? You can't now. You can't do it. Part of my French, but uh, you know now you're screwed, right? You can't do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, hi, hi, Gary. <laughs> so that's that's why it's like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Here, let me get this thing palmed, un, unpalmed, and then shake your hand. <laughs> right. So it's like the real performing in the real world is the thing that's yeah. going to teach you this stuff, and you mm-hmm. can't you can't think about you, you, it. You gotta get punched in the face by reality a few times. Well, it's like the you... whole. I, I reminded of like the Greek. Um, uh, methodology of like that uh, i forget what the name of it is but the idea that you could just by pure rationale describe every mechanism in the universe there's a philosophical mm. branch where you could just reason out everything um yeah. without experimentation and that's why the scientific method run out <laughs> because, because, <Yeah. laughs> because you can't you can't do right. that it doesn't work and yeah. i just proved it i have a comment here um sure from Big Hands Card Magic says, "Can you do basic basic sleight of hand at a gig and hem- and then be okay with it?" Yes, absolutely. I've yeah. I've done entire shows, and I think our my stream is starting to slow down a little bit here too. So um, if it gets too bad, we'll have to look at that. But um, yes, you definitely well, can. Especially kids shows because they they tend to they tend to be more proppy and and the props are doing most of the the magic anyway. And yeah. so um, you're you're not doing much of the magic but you're the one still doing the entertaining right again the if you're doing it as a professional the goal is entertainment right so how are you drawing them in how are you building your routines what order are you putting the effects in is there a natural flow is it engaging are are you bringing people in are you are you handing things out you know all those kinds of things because they the audience doesn't know Right, the audience doesn't know if you're doing it with slight or with gaff. Right, right. Then they should. If they do know, know, then you messed then you, up. Then you didn't do something right. Right. Okay, you messed up the slight or you messed up the gaff. Doesn't matter. Right. If they know which one you used, you messed up. Right. Yeah. So yeah, they don't know, so it, it doesn't. Well, this matter. is this goes into um, you know I guess the strength of of knowing sleight of hand 
mm-hmm. to, to, to having a, a good foundational um, mm-hmm. education and sleight of hand is um, I do. Uh, you know, I've been doing this forever. Yeah. And, um, you know, in the beginning, in the early uh, years of my, my – the formative years of my of my magic learning, you know, of course, I had like the – I think you had the Fisher-Price magic kit. I had something called Mr. Creepy's magic kit, which I'm trying okay. to find – I'm trying to find one because uh, – memories yeah. um but uh you know those were all those were all gimmicked or gaffed or whatever mm-hmm. they were meant for kids with very low skill level who wanted to kind of right. jump into the world of magic to learn stuff real fast um but shortly after that i started getting involved in more heavy sleight of hand stuff i remember the first like <clears throat> heavy sleight of hand book that i ever got was card college volume one mm-hmm. and i got that for my birthday it was a very expensive book and uh, that was what I, that's what I got for my birthday that, for that year. Yeah. And I learned everything front back, you know, front and back and that whole thing. And then after that, yeah. I was, I found out about Dover publications and I found out about all these magic books that were um, reprints so, and they were affordable and you could find them at Barnes and Nobles for like, you know, six or $7. And then, mm-hmm. but that's all again, sleight of hand stuff. So that's where kind of my education started going was in all this laying the foundation for sleight of hand with, any kind of object that you can imagine. Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, yeah, I, but the, the point that I'm getting to is that was very helpful because I actually did a gig one time. I don't know if I've told you this story, but I, it was early whenever I was kind of like just dipping my toe in the waters the first time mm-hmm. with becoming a, a professional magician. Cause I've, I've had a couple of starts and stops before I went full time. Um, I was working for this entertainment company and they were paying $35 a show. It was really crap. Yeah. Yeah. Like don't ever take that deal. Okay. Don't ever take that deal. But it was for the time and for what my, my anyway. situation it was whatever. So I do this gig for Easter and I realize when I get to the gig, I'm supposed to be doing this parlor style show for all these people in this clubhouse. And I had left all of my, my entire show at home, 45 minutes away. You, you did tell me this. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm I made the story. I, uh, I was there early and I said, hey, um, hey, uh, can I borrow? We were in the party, you know, we were in the clubhouse. So they mm-hmm. had like things like some styrofoam cups and napkins and, and straws and everything. So I, I, I said, can I borrow a couple of things before the show? I'd like to use them in the show and it'd be better if they were yours, you know. Right. Sure. OK. So I borrowed a couple of things. And then uh, just like some styrofoam cups and some straws and some napkins or something. And then the rest of everything else I, I, I got was just borrowed from the audience, right? I would mm-hmm. just, and I did an entire like 30-minute show with mm-hmm. nothing. <laughs> I didn't have anything nothing with that, me. Like nothing that you brought, yeah. Nothing I brought, right? Just the shirt on my back. And, and, that, and that's, that's the freedom that sleight of hand gives you. Right. Um, not just in case you you forget something like that. You're you're way more adaptive. You're you're more able to come up with new things, to solve things on the spot, to improvise, to um, and, and not just like improvise like, oh, you're going to figure out how to do a show like in the middle of an effect. Like I can try I mean, it this way, too. I could. Yeah. You'll you'll find yourself like inventing effects on the fly. Um <clears throat> and then later you're like okay that was really really good i need to try and remember that, that yeah. and figure out how i did that <laughs> well know? i did that yeah i did that with, just get uh, that zone where you, where you got everything going really well and, and then you'll you'll when you're in that zone it's yeah it's, it's virtuosity amazing. i think is the word right virtuosity virtuosity like okay um but yeah there's like uh like there's enough there's a i'll show it to you why not but again it, it's not um it's not necessary no right it's not i, I mean, mean it's, it's really grand helpful. illusion Right, Grand Illusion doesn't use any sleight of hand. They're all purchased props. They're, they're great big pieces of furniture that have no business being anywhere except in a magic show, right? So, so the idea that you would feel weird about charging for a show where you didn't do any sleight of hand, it's like... Well, now here's, here's something an... I, do wanna, I, I do wanna point out because there's an, there's an effect that I absolutely hate. Okay. Okay, it's a close-up effect. Okay. And I absolutely hate it. Okay. And um, uh, bill tube. Okay. I hate bill tube, and right. I, and I hate effects like bill tube. Um, the idea that, and, and this is something that I've talked with David Hyra about too, and mm-hmm. he, he actually caught me doing this, right? 
but it was the idea that the prop does the magic, not the magician, right? That right. that's that's a big no no, right? Um, if you have something like if 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 you have to explain if you're in a close up situation and you are supposed to be using normal objects to to try to explain away this really odd thing that nobody has ever seen before that looks purpose built. Right. And then try to do a routine with it. But then like tell people, no, 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 this, ha it didn't have anything to do with it. Like, Oh, this, I found this brass tube in my grandfather's locker. I don't know what it does, but let's find out together. Like yeah. it's, it's like you've, you've, you've broken, you've broken the illusion already. Right. Mm -hmm. that you, you have not given people a, a chance to suspend their disbelief yet. Because right. people are going, okay, that's, that's some magic prop. Or that's like yeah, something so you bought from a magic some, yeah. shop. Yeah. So that kind of magic, I'm not a big fan of. Or like, you know, any of the, well, not all of the brass stuff, but like a lot but, of the but brass. Even you could, yeah. But even with, even with some of those really proppy things, you can frame it and present it in a way that, that you're doing the magic, right? It's harder right. to, to frame it that way. I mean, don't. That's why I like yeah. if I'm going to do something like that, I like more natural looking props. Like for instance, mm -hmm. um, in Art of Astonishment Volume One, um, Paul Harris talks about the use of a lip balm container mm -hmm. as a uh, coin box, as an Aikido coin box. He's like, it's, okay. a, it's the right size. It's got the lid. It has a little divot mm -hmm. in the bottom. It's more, I guess, more of a Boston box than an, than an Aikido coin box. Right. But, but um, using that. Mm -hmm. And and that's like, well, that's just fine. Now, yeah, it's a little weird. You're keeping your quarters in in you know in a in, in this thing, but it's a lot easier to explain away that maybe he's just a weirdo or something, or that you know I carry yeah. it because there's something fun I can do with this, as opposed to, no, 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 this is a container that mm -hmm. you know, like so. I, I think that if you can find a natural looking prop that people are are that's common and useful or that people mm -hmm. have in their purses probably, or in their, in their pockets. Seen before, or... so, something that doesn't look like it's doesn't like look like a, a magic shop. Doesn't look like it came from a right. magic shop. Right. So, and that, I mean, again, you know, again, you can frame it a lot of different ways. Hot rod. I still think, you know, I, I'm in agreement with you that even though it looks like a magic, pro like what else, this does not exist <laughs> in the natural world at <laughs> right. all. Um, it's still a great trick to learn for beginners right. because it teaches you so but, many different but, things. But but in that vein, yes, it, it is a magical object, but it's not trying to pass itself off as a container that's only a container, right? right. It, it's not, um, yes, it's it's the magic wand. Right. Okay, let me show you how this magic wand does magic, or let me show you what's magic about it. Right. Right, that, that, that's, that's a fine. different line in the in the mind i think than um, a build tube or or something like that yeah i yes and i've got some, i got some other comments here too i'm sorry i'm great yeah no no sure. no let's do it um big hands card magic says do you prefer tabled or in the hand slights and i have some thoughts about this but uh if you, if you wanted to tabled or in the hand slights like i said i'm not not following it. Uh, it, okay. So I've never heard of tabled slides before. I guess that's what's throwing me. Sure. Uh, well, I think I th and I think maybe correct me if I'm wrong, big hands, but I think um, that you're getting to maybe performing in one type of venue or, or in one type of situation or another. Uh, if that's if that's the question, I've almost always worked at a table. Um, even I, even in walk around environments, I've I've brought my own table. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I have a nice kind of folding table and i can just pick it up and set it down somewhere and, and start performing but i've i've kind of always done that i mean i could i could perform with just a deck of cards or scarves or ropes or any number of things but i i've just i've worked at tables so much and if you try to use somebody else's table the height can be wrong. You might not have enough room. You don't know what's already on there. Um, you don't know if it's going to be a perfectly hard, flat surface, and you're going to be like trying to peel up cards the whole time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's any number of, of issues that are the question, and then so I just I just bring my table. It's a good height, so I can <laughs> use it while standing. Um, it's not big, so people can can come around. And, like people can come close. Um, so that's that's how I prefer to work, right? Obviously it's a lot cleaner. And then I, and then I have a, like a pouch on the back that I can pull stuff out of and, and work with. And I can also use it as a, yeah, but I can also use it as a drop. 
Yep. Right. Yep. So, and and for some reason, nobody ever questioned it. Right. So it's like, well, like whenever you throw something, you're out. literally watching me pull stuff in and out of the spot, but the I could drop stuff in there and they they never. Well, it's like throwing stuff of off things. camera, right? You just go. Yeah. And, so uh, people don't people don't care where it goes. Yeah, <laughs> it's just gone now, right? It's. Does that answer the question as far as standing? So he's asking. He he table? clarified a little bit. He said, uh, "Do I basically do you, you prefer sitting at a table or standing up when you perform?" I prefer standing at a table. Okay, and for me, I prefer. I, I mean, honestly, it depends. When I'm doing close up, that's because that's the kind of close up I'm used to doing. Standing at a table. Okay, and see, I'm I, I defer from that, right? Um, you yeah. know, I uh, in in a lot of situations, almost every situation that I perform at, like a walk around at a party or something, mm -hmm. I'm performing just in my hands or just in the spectators' hands, right? right. Not so much in the spectators' hands nowadays, uh, but mm -hmm. but. Uh, you know, uh, for most of my career and hopefully most of my career post uh, this whole pandemic thing, that that'll be true. Um, right. But I really like performing at a table. I really like mm -hmm. performing seated at a table. Okay. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for it. One, uh, I know my angles are good, right? True. Uh, I have more control over who I'm performing for. There's, it's, it's, it almost feels like you have a mini stage. Um, it's about standing at a table, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's okay, so it's for the same reasons, right? And, well, yeah, and, and what I've found, because um, like I've done J.C. Penney's corporate Christmas party, number of different corporate events, um, like the best, the best place I could find to work was near the buffet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like everybody's kind of waiting for their turn to go through something, yep. and you can stand in one spot, and the people just naturally come by you, and you, you only know like you only need to do like two, three routines, and as people come this... by, they get to see something, and they'll you just cycle them through. Nobody, you are doing enough magic to where you're not going to do the same trick twice for the same audience because they're passing through fast enough, and even if they can look at you, they're right. You're cycling it enough at the right speed. And then you don't have to keep moving around, right? right? The, the audience is literally walking past you and you're just doing different things. So <clears throat> that's, that was what I've found is one of the best ways to do it. Yeah. And I, if, you if know, in a situation that has that. yeah, and, and that's true, right? Sometimes you'll have a plate at dinner or, you know, whatever. Right. So you can't yeah, really do obviously. that, uh, which is one of the reasons I do not like, uh, per, that's why whenever I'm like looking for a restaurant and if you guys mm -hmm. want to know more about the restaurant lecture, I'm still working on it. Don't worry. It's coming. Um, but, uh, I I never look at a restaurant that has a buffet. If it's a buffet restaurant, I don't I don't do it. <laughs> um, and there's because because I do like I, I my, you actually don't have a lot to add to them for them because there, there's not that time right. And that, I mean because you're having to work or... so quickly. Yeah. Um. Because and then again, you're not yeah to the restaurant. You're not really providing yeah. a real service because. Mm -mm. Okay, well, they all, all, you're, all you can say is that they, they came and they saw magic. Whereas if you're performing for people who are have to wait for their food, you have perceptually made the wait less, yes. right? Which does have a big advantage to a restaurant. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know what the name of that science is that studies the, the perception of time passing. It's not actually – there's a whole field of study, and I wish I could remember the name of it. Um, but – an example of, of some of the things these people have done is like, okay, people don't like waiting for elevators, right? Mm -hmm. And all the, there was this building and all these people were waiting for elevators and they're like, is there any way to make the elevator faster? I know where you're going with this. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, trying to make an elevator faster is very expensive, right? Because you have to like replace everything. You need new hardware, new motors, all sorts of stuff. And so um, what they did is they ended up just putting mirrors down there where <laughs> how about that where the buttons were right and then people would hit the elevator button and then they just kind of naturally sit there and groom themselves or look around or or yeah they, you know sit there make sure they're looking good and then okay cool right and it didn't feel like they were lasting like they were there as long right and yeah the complaints went away so uh it's, it's that perception of time and yeah at a buffet you don't have that issue right well we are getting close to the end of the stream here mm -hmm. And uh, before before we do anything else, I want to remind everyone, if you're enjoying this content, uh, you know, leaving a like on this video helps a lot. Leaving a comment uh, also helps. Sharing this with a friend if you find this video helpful. 
If you're not subscribed, uh, go ahead and subscribe. You're still here, which means you you are enjoying the content. So go ahead and subscribe. What are you doing? I found out like 72% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed yet. So go subscribe. Help me out. Um, and it's a free thing that you can do that helps me a lot. And uh, and don't forget to go check out yesterday's video where you can learn about the 4,000 subscriber giveaway because I really want to have a lot of involvement and make sure that uh, everybody, we, we have a, a big spread of people to make it a little bit more fun and exciting. Uh, you can find out all the details for how to enter that and all the links for all of that in yesterday's video. It's called I Am Our Reaction and 4,000 Subscriber Giveaway. Um, before we go, Joe, do you have uh, do you have any other uh, comments or uh, things that you want to share or add? Um, just keep the goal in mind. You know, um, if you're doing it for fun, enjoy it. If you're doing it to build dexterity and and work on that, do that. If you're if you're doing it professionally, be sure to focus on the business side. If you're doing it for to have a good time with friends, well, be sure they're having a good time. Um, keep the goal in mind is what I would say. Right on, right on. Keep keep the faith. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, with that, I think we're we're gonna we're gonna close it down. Thank you, Joe, so much for joining us tonight. Hopefully, we'll get to do this a whole bunch more in the future. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we'll the, see uh, how people uh, respond to you. <laughs> people downvote the crap out of this. In fact, I was I would suggest people downvote it so I don't have to deal with this again because. <laughs> This thing just gets torched, then he'll never have me back. So that oh, would be terrible. The, oh, he would hate that. I would. Oh. Um, hey, Big Hands Card Magic says, nice beard, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody said anything about my beard. Oh, my. Yeah, because it's not nice. No, your beard is much nicer than mine. Much nicer. Yes. For, this is like the longest my beard has ever been, aside from like high school. This like weird, like super long, ugly rat tail goes. Is that the thing. same time you had the hair? Like, uh. <laughs> It was about that time. Yeah. Are, we, are we allowed to talk about that? <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, everyone's make, everyone makes mistakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> things with our hair. It's like the, yeah, lots of mistakes. It's like the time I had the skullet. I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I guess right. we're gonna close it down. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the live stream. I had a great time hanging out with you, Joe, and, and talking shop, and I hope everybody else did too. Thank you. <laughs>